Ukraine's railroad has become a lifeline for refugees. All these stations are gateways to safety that lead to Lviv, which has become a vital way out of the country. From here, most travel to Shemyshil, a small Polish town eight miles from the Ukrainian border. Its train station has transformed into a relief center. Inside, volunteers welcome the refugees and offer them food as they figure out where to go next. Many have brought their pets on the long journey, but they've only brought as much as they can carry. Like Marina and her son, who spent the night here at the train station after leaving everything behind. Daria spent six hours waiting in an underpass on her journey here. Sisters Martina and Sabina were asleep in their homes when their city came under fire. As Russia continues to move further into Ukraine, this critical web of escape routes is increasingly under attack, making it harder and harder for millions of Ukrainians to escape the invasion. Since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, more than three million people have fled their homes. Nearly all of them are moving west, away from Russia and towards these countries over here. And the vast majority, around two million, are going here, to Poland. Most of them are women and children. Ukraine is requiring most men between the ages of 18 and 60 to stay behind and encouraging them to fight. Since the war began, Ukraine has closed its airspace to civilian flights, and the roads have become increasingly dangerous. Railway stations are the most important points in the country so far because people uh, can get on the train on the cities and move to west and save their lives. That's Alexander Komishin. He's in charge of a mobile command team that has evacuated more than two million people by train. We focus on different cities uh, depending on the bombing. Once new cities are under shelling, we increase the capacity for these cities. Things change so fast, Ukrainian Railways releases a daily schedule. And uh, so far, the most popular roads are Kiev, Lviv, Kharkiv, Lviv, Dnieper, Lviv. At the stations, people are packed into evacuation trains. And it's in large part because of Alexander's policy. All people who would like to leave the city can do it within one day. So we finish the day with zero people on the railway station. But it's not just about getting on the train. The journey itself is getting more dangerous, too. On March 13th, Russian forces hit an evacuation train here, killing the conductor and stranding hundreds. Further north, near Kharkiv, an undetonated bomb landed right by the train tracks a few days earlier. Ukrainian railway workers had to defuse and remove it. Damaged tracks like these can temporarily stop escape routes. We got the greatest team of infrastructure professionals who start repairing the track once the bombing stops, and they do it in hours, not days. But bomb bridges like this one can shut them down permanently. The areas over here where Russia is fighting for control are especially dangerous for trains to reach. As a result, most of these stations shut down soon after the war began, including Mykolaiv, the port city Martina and Sabina fled. Their parents drove them to Odessa, where the train station was still operating, so they could make it to Lviv. Poland has become the top destination for refugees because it has a very long border with Ukraine. It's also culturally and linguistically similar, 
and already has over a million Ukrainians living and working in the country. But it's also because soon after Russia invaded Ukraine, the EU did something unprecedented. Europe will be there for them, not only in the first days, but also in the weeks and months to come. They activated this directive, which provides temporary protection. It was first issued in 2001, after a decade of wars in southeastern Europe displaced millions of people. The directive allowed for temporary protection for people fleeing from non-EU countries, but it was never invoked. Until now. What the Temporary Protection Directive offers is a range of rights that are applicable immediately. And these include residency rights, right to have access to the labor market, right to healthcare, social protection, but also right to education. What is also notable is that this mechanism was adopted by all the EU member states. This means that the millions of people fleeing Ukraine can continue on to any of the 27 EU countries with these protections for up to three years. This is um, a testimony to the large scale of the crisis that we're seeing now in Europe. But despite this directive, not all seeking refuge have been treated the same way on the ground. Many non-Ukrainians have experienced racism as they fled. Reports include being pushed to the back of the lines at the border and being turned away at hotels. In Shemeshel, though, thousands keep arriving every day. For many refugees arriving in Shemeshel, this is just the first stop out of Ukraine. Martina and Sabina have family in Poland to help them get started. But the vast majority will go on to reception centers or move deeper into Europe and farther away from home. Some people cry, some people smile, some people are happy, some people are not happy. But finally, all the people who left the cities which are shelled, they can sleep at least in a calm place and without the bombing. That's the most important thing we keep in mind that gives me uh, understanding that we do right job. Yeah. 